knowledge creators is what Guru says. Uh, talking about Plaksha University, Ashoka University, which is like a sister university, the liberal arts university. Firstly, I wanted to ask, what's the opposite of liberal arts? The formal arts? What is, I mean, I don't know. Why, why do we call them the liberal arts? So is there something like liberal science? Is that what Plaksha is about? So in any case, like Plaksha, again, the model that he was talking about, a lot of founders come together and they are like private individuals and they have a common public vision for excellence in higher education. And then ISP was nurtured there and then it's grown by leaps and bounds from there because of the kind of talent that came in right in the beginning in terms of the thinking process. Same is what has happened with Ashoka and now happening with Plaksha. How do you look upon Plaksha? Because it's like the counterpart of Ashoka in a way. So how do you look upon Plaksha? What is different about Plaksha in terms of an engineering college as one would normally imagine it? Hello, I'm audible. Okay. Uh, thanks a lot for that question, Jyoti, and thanks, uh, Guru, for everything that you shared. You're absolutely right that ISB and Ashoka set a really good trend in terms of reimagining business education and reimagining liberal arts education. And Plaksha is now reimagining tech education as we know it and understand it. Uh, I would say this is happening in three ways, uh, which is what we consider as our mission. The first one is reimagining the education side of it itself which is to not just think of technology in terms of isolated disciplines, but in terms of making it more interdisciplinary, integrating technology with liberal arts, with humanities, with business, uh, making it a lot more oriented around real world problems. Finally, engineering is not about things, it's for people. So how do you create the sort of graduates who will go out and create solutions to problems that we face around us? How do we make it more experiential, hands-on? Uh, so that students don't just graduate with narrow skills or knowledge, but how to apply that in the real world. So this is around reimagining the education side of it. The second part of it is around building entrepreneurial mindset. Uh, India as a country has leaps and bounds to go in this and so much potential. And as a tech institution, we have the scope to create unicorns from India, to create global companies. And we, as a university that is set up by entrepreneurs, uh, there are more than 100 uh, founders and donors behind the initiative. Most of them are first generation entrepreneurs. This is something that is inherent to Plaksha's culture and that is also seeping through in students. Uh, as an example, students from the first graduating batch uh, already got selected in Y Combinator and so on. So this is uh, a part of the culture from the start. And the third part is, and related to what Guru was saying, is around how we think about research. Uh, as a tech institution, it would be uh, uh, incomplete without research, and that has to be front and center. It is the way in which one attracts top faculty around the world, and it is the core mission of an institution. But what we also want to do differently on the research side is to anchor it around themes of global relevance, uh, what we call grand challenges. So there is research for the sake of research, but there is research for solving larger problems. And as a university, we have picked a few themes that we want to put dedicated energy behind, which are themes such as digital agriculture, clean energy, water security, and so on, which are highly multidisciplinary. So if you pick up this as a problem statement, it is not linked to one specific engineering discipline, and engineering is only one part of it. It requires several engineering disciplines, it requires sciences, it requires humanities, it requires business. How do we put all these things together in the context of solving problems? Uh, that is how we want to anchor our research efforts and we're amazed to find how faculty whom we've recruited are actually working together from completely different areas and working on common problems that they're passionate about. Well, we, but I would like to come back to uh, what you just said that there is so much talent here one of your first um, kind of graduating batches, somebody has gone to Y Combinator. And that yet that entrepreneurial leap that should be taken is not being taken. How come that's not happening? I, I mean, just to kind of dissect that problem. India is full of problems everywhere. Everything is, a, I say India is full of unicorns. I mean, there are billion dollars lying everywhere. Solve any one problem at scale, you're a unicorn. Solve the next small problem, which is even roadside berms, getting them right, you are, you are a unicorn. So this country is full of billion dollar potentials, but yet it's not happening. Why is that not happening? It, it, what, I mean, institutes of excellence are there, that education is there, the desire to kind of do well is there. So that, where, where, where is that gap? What, and, and what, what, what is being done by institutes like Plaksha to address that? 
Okay, sure. It's a great question. So I think the gap is along the entire value chain. It starts with education, but there are many other things after that. You know, BATs of doing business and you know various other things that come after that. I won't focus on all the other things. I'll focus on the role of educational institutions in this. And what we strongly believe in is the need to create an entrepreneurial mindset, which is different from creating entrepreneurs. Uh, because an entrepreneurial mindset not just results in people who will go out and create startups and companies, but also entrepreneurs, people who will go into companies and create products over there, or who will go into companies and do more than what they're asked to do, take initiative, uh, you know, go into new territories. So that mindset is what we want to focus on. Now, as a mindset, what that would mean is students who take initiative, who focus on creating value. Often the way education is designed, they are put through a process where they don't have a lot of choice. Uh, and they are measured around metrics where, uh, which does not give importance to these things. It's around grades, it's around you know, certain things. So students will also anchor themselves to things that they are measured on. Whereas as an institution, we can completely turn that around. We can change the way in which we assess students. We can change the way in which we give opportunities to them. One of the things that's being spoken a lot in education uh, uh, circles these days around the world is around student-centered learning, where you make students in charge of their own learning journey. Uh, they think they're not just following a system that has been laid out for them by somebody else, but actually think about the sort of path that they want to create for themselves, and faculty serve as mentors and guides to help them through that process. These sort of things build that mindset in students from, from, from the start. At Plaksha, what we are also doing is we are trying to create micro enterprises on campus, which is to say, if you think about, let's say, a food system on campus or water system on campus, how can you think of this as a mini business which students can actually create and run? How do they think about, you know, how to get the best nutritious food at lowest cost and so on and actually run that enterprise? There are some places around the world that do that. At Howard Business School, they try to. Uh, yeah, they try to get students to learn management concepts by implementing them on the campus. So if they have services being offered, they should be done with the best level of marketing, customer service, etc. Uh, so at an engineering institution, how can we build in these mindsets? If we are talking about clean energy, it's not just about doing that at a global level. It's about how we implement that on our campus, in our buildings. And these are things that will build them as entrepreneurs. And I feel that as a greenfield institution, there is so much opportunity for students to build things from scratch, and that mindset will then result in uh, various other things that happen in their life, including creating companies, but not limited to that. Right. Yeah, like in Maslow's uh, hierarchy of needs, you're so caught up in the basics itself of uh, living out your lives in India. Perhaps, I don't know if that is also a factor which kind of keeps you so caught up that you don't reach the self-actualization oblique uh, entrepreneurial mindset level because you're so caught up just making sure that you have food on the table, you're able to kind of get uh, basics kind of sorted. An entrepreneurial mindset helps in that. I, I, know, I, know, <laughs> I know if you look at a lot of successful entrepreneurs, they're actually the ones who have come from backgrounds which would have been pretty challenging. Exactly. I mean, the moment your challenges are ironed out, it in fact becomes difficult to have the entrepreneurial mindset. I don't know. Th th there are exceptions everywhere. I mean, th exactly. there's no formula that one can say exactly. that, okay, because this is what is going to lead to it. Right. Because when you're in a resource-constrained environment, that's where entrepreneurial energy is born. Yes. If you have all of those resources, you don't require it. Yes. Guru just said that these are exciting times, Pallavi. Uh, and there's a strange kind of uh, movement that one is seeing. Like you were talking about micro enterprises at an educational institute. Corporates are trying to educate their employees so that they are ready for the job that they do. They are taking on the role of education. Educational institutes are taking on the role of creating entrepreneurs. So there are overlaps that are starting to happen. So which, which is an exciting development that is taking place. We had uh, Dr. Sethia earlier uh, talking about ethics with technology. Like, for example, when you talk about a university like Plaksha, an institute like Plaksha coming up, there is a classic example which is given of a self-driving car on a highway where there are, there's a lot of traffic moving on it. The self-driving car has its own algorithm operating in it. It's scanning the road using lasers, radars, whatever. Suddenly it sees that a child with a football kind of runs onto the road. Now the car has to take a decision. The car has to take a decision because the driver is sleeping at the back because that's the idea of a self-driving car. So now the car can either swerve to the lane on the side and hit oncoming traffic and kill the passenger or it can kill the child. The algorithm has to take that decision. 
if it was a human you could say that well i mean you took the decision didn't take whatever reason i couldn't do anything this is what i could do but as an engineering problem you have to have a clear algorithm for it what will you do in such a situation what will the car do should it slam the brakes it still kills the child should it swerve and save kill the passenger so that's where this overlap of ethics with technology will matter so that an engineer who is coding the algorithm can actually think about the ethics and try to program it accordingly so is that is that something that is part of the vision of plaksha oh absolutely if you come to plaksha in september there is a 3 month course on ethics of technological innovation that is being offered which is mandatory for every student across whatever discipline they are doing and there be versions of it that continue ethics is absolutely central to uh, technological progress be that in the example that you described be that in um, uh, the progress around bioengineering be that in how algorithms are written and biases and so on that are built into it it is in everything and uh, it was being mentioned earlier uh, uh, during the introductions that technology has so much power there is so much that can be done with it but with all of that power and i'm quoting spider man here comes a lot of responsibility um, and that is something that is absolutely absolutely essential for every person to be trained in particularly in technology but also in every other discipline the same thing would apply to business um, and to other disciplines so this is something that we really focus on not just in terms of coursework but also as students start to work on real problems uh, there is a lot of project based learning that is built in through their experiences as they work on those projects these questions will also arise as part of that and they will need to learn how to address it as they think about the problem how to put that in the framing of the problem and how to work on it as they go along